Hello everyone, welcome to the video on gravitational potential energy. By way of review, all objects in gravitational fields will possess gravitational potential energy. By definition, potential energy is the amount of work that can be done by gravity at a particular height h. Suppose you have a ball of mass m and we bring this ball vertically upwards by a vertical displacement of h. Then at a new height, this ball will have a potential energy of u equals to mgh, where m is mass of the ball, g is gravitational acceleration, and h of course is the vertical displacement that's traveled by the ball. The value of u can be interpreted in two ways. It is the amount of work that can be done by gravity if the ball was to be dropped at this given point. Alternatively, you can also look at potential energy as the amount of positive work you have to do to bring this ball from the original point on the ground to this point it's currently at. The gravitational potential to you, it will decrease as the mass is approaching the source of gravity. This means as the ball is being brought back to its original point towards the source of gravity, which is the ground, its gravitational potential energy will decrease as the height decreases. Vice versa, if I were to bring this ball further away upwards, then its gravitational potential energy will also increase with the height. This equation is quite useful when it comes to analyzing potential energy on the surface of Earth. However, it has a pretty big assumption, and that is it assumes g, the acceleration due to gravity, is a constant value. By way of review, in the gravitational field strength module, we talked about how the value of g is not a constant number. It varies depending on the mass of the Earth, or the planet, and the radius of the planet. On Earth, this value is affected by three things mainly. The distance from the Earth's center, this can be also interpreted as altitude, the crust density, and the shape of the Earth, recalling that the Earth is not a completely perfect sphere. It is slightly elliptical, whereby the radius at the North Pole and South Pole are slightly shorter than the radii across the equator. So as an object is moved further away from the Earth's surface, or the Earth's center for that sake, the value of g will quickly decrease as the value of r increases. The g value here is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. So as the radius increases, the g value decreases. So as you can see by this equation, the value of g is in fact not constant. So therefore, when we are dealing with gravitational potential energy over a larger distance, we need to have a more accurate equation that will account for the variability in the g value. We can derive this equation in a very simple way by substituting the g value gm over r squared, where the capital M is of course the mass of the Earth, into the potential energy formula we saw earlier. And this will give us a new equation where the potential energy is equal to gmm, the capital M here is mass of the planet, the smaller m here is the mass of object you're referring to, and of course r is the distance between the center of the Earth and the point of reference. Now this equation looks all good, however there's one problem. As the radius r increases, in other words, as an object is brought further away from the gravitational field of Earth, in this equation, the gravitational potential energy actually decreases, which contradicts exactly what we said before. Previously, we discussed that as the distance increases, the gravitational potential energy should increase. But this equation does not show that in a mathematical sense. So we need to make some modifications. The modification we're going to make for this equation is we're going to change the reference point to an infinity point that's very, very far away from any source of gravity. Now, when r is infinity, have a think about what happens to the gravitational potential energy. Well, first of all, the gravitational acceleration becomes zero because it's infinitely far away from any source of gravity. At this point, your gravitational potential energy of the object should also be zero because r is infinity. As the object is brought towards a gravitational field, remember that its gravitational potential energy should decrease as r decreases. This is the reason why we will insert a negative sign in front of the equation we just derived. This way, at the infinity point, when r is infinity, the gravitational potential energy is zero, and as the r decreases as the object is brought towards the field of gravity, the value of u will decrease. So in other words, it becomes more negative. So the new equation for gravitational potential energy uses an infinity point as a reference point. 
and at this infinity point, so when r is equal to infinity, the gravitational potential to u is exactly the zero. Now, this should make sense to you logically, because when you have a point that's infinitely far away from any source of gravity, there shouldn't be any amount of potential energy due to gravity at that point. This equation is preferred over our previous equation of u equals mgh, because it accounts for the changes in gravity of the g value when the mass is brought over a large distance in a gravitational field. The value of u decreases or becomes more negative as the mass is approaching the source of gravity. So this is when the value of r is decreasing. Vice versa, the value of u will increase and become less negative as the mass is brought further away from the source of gravity. So this is when the value of r is increasing. On the graph, the relationship between distance or radius r and the value of gravitational potential energy, in this case it's denoted by Ep, is a hyperbolic one. The two are inversely proportional. So we can see that as the r is increasing towards infinity, the value of u or Ep is increasing as well and it's approaching zero. Vice versa, as the r is decreasing, that value of Ep is decreasing and becomes more negative. Since the reference point is redefined in the new equation, the definition of the two equations for gravitational potential energy will be different as well. In the old equation, the energy U is defined by the energy required to lift an object of mass m by a height of h meters above the ground. In the new equation, it's slightly more complex. This is the energy required to move a mass from a point of infinity to the point within the gravitational field, that is, the distance r the source of gravity. The old equation is suitable and valid when you're talking about small distances, as it assumes g is constant. The new equation accounts for the variability of g value and should be used when the distance is large. Using the new equation for gravitational potential energy, we can also calculate the amount of work we need to do to move masses within the gravitational field. Now suppose you have a rocket of mass m that's originally at the surface of the Earth at point P. And we want to bring this rocket from point P to point Q. As the rocket is approaching point Q, the value of R is increasing, which results in a greater gravitational potential energy. Therefore, we need to do positive work to bring the rocket from point P to point Q. And the amount of work that we put in will be equal to the change in the gravitational potential energy. In other words, we can find this change by subtracting the final U value at point Q by the initial U value at point P. So the work done is equal to the U final minus the U initial. If we use the equation minus G M M over R, we can find a more detailed expression for the work done. The work done to move a mass from point P to point Q within the gravitational field will be minus G M M over r final, so this is your final radius at point Q. Subtract, and remember there's a bracket around here so to denote that there's also another negative sign in front of the equation. GMM over r initial, this is the initial radius, so it's rp. And you can further simplify this equation by factorizing GMM in the numerator, for which we'll get GMM 1 over r initial minus 1 over r final. So on the graph, what we are doing to find the work done is finding out the exact gravitational potential energy at point P and Q respectively. So at point P, this corresponds to this point on the graph, and point Q is this point on the graph. And at these two points, the rocket will have different amounts of gravitational potential energy. If we can find out the difference between the two, that is the amount of work done we need to move the mass from point P to point Q. Okay, let's have a look at a practice question. A satellite with a mass of 200 kilograms maintains its orbit at an altitude of 300 kilometers above Earth's surface. Determine the gravitational potential energy of the satellite at this altitude. So to start the question, let's recall the equation for gravitational potential energy. So that's going to be U equals to minus G M M over R. The gravitational universal constant is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11, 
and capital M here is mass of the Earth, 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24, and smaller m is the mass of the satellite, 200 kilograms. R here in the denominator, this is the orbital radius of the satellite. And it's important to note that the radius here is not 300 kilometers. The radius consists of the altitude as well as the average radius of planet Earth. So radius here actually equals to the average radius of the Earth plus the altitude, which is 300,000 meters. And this gives us minus 1.2 times 10 to the power of 10 joules. Let's look at part B. Calculate the work done to move the satellite to an altitude of 4,000 kilometers above Earth's surface. So again, it's always a good idea to visualize the scenario. So initially, the satellite is at an altitude of 300 kilometers. So this distance here above the surface of Earth, this is 300 kilometers. And we want to bring the satellite to a much higher altitude of 4,000 kilometers. So this new altitude is 4,000 kilometers above Earth's surface. The reason why we need to put in a positive work is because at a greater altitude, the satellite has a greater gravitational potential energy. So in order to give it a greater gravitational potential energy, by applying the law of conservation of energy, we need to do work. We need to put in energy to bring the satellite to a higher altitude. So the work done is equal to the final potential energy, let's call that UF, minus the initial potential energy, let's call that UI. Okay, so this is also the change in gravitational potential energy. This is equal to minus G M M over R F. Now R F, remember, this is 4,000 kilometers plus the radius of the Earth. Minus bracket minus G M M over R initial. We can simplify this expression a little bit by factorizing out G M M in the numerator and also converting the two negative signs into a positive sign. So we have G M M bracket minus 1 over Rf plus 1 over Ri. Now we can make all the substitutions now. So G is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11. Capital M is the mass of the planet. And smaller m is 200 kilograms. And we'll times this by the second term. So minus 1 over. Remember we have to add the radius of the Earth. So 4,000 kilometers is 4 million meters. And this gives me a positive work of 4.28 times 10 to the power of 9 joules. So this number is the amount of energy we need to put into the satellite in order to move it from point A at 300 kilometers altitude to point B, 4,000 kilometers altitude. And this will conclude the video on gravitational potential energy.